everybody, it's me. I hope I remember to have this segment in black and white. And I hope my doggie doesn't go pulling the curtain back so routinely this time. This is another one of the photo image inspiration videos in the series that Angie from 4F Beauty has been doing. And this is it's my chance to do number three. Three, guys. Three. This is my third video as part of this series. I love this series. I really do. Our picture is amazing. One of Angie's friends, I think it's Maz, and I think she did the photograph for the first one that we did together. This one is incredibly beautiful. It's bubbles, but it's bubbles at twilight with lights reflecting off of them, shooting colors around the spheres. They're gorgeous. And I'm hoping what I did does them justice. If you want to see what all of this looks like in color, hang on. We'll be there in a second. Hi, everybody. It's me. I am once again doing a collaboration with our beloved Angie, who is 4F Beauty. She is wonderful. And it was her turn to pick the picture so that we have our photographic inspiration. This picture is incredible. The colors are wonderful. There's some deep darks and some kind of blue-gray sky. And then there's these bubbles that are being hit by lights. I'm not sure where the lights are from, but these gorgeous, gorgeous bubbles that are floating in the sky with these beautiful neon reflections. I'm just, yes. Now, hopefully, this mess will be looking pretty good by the time I get to the end. And I want to introduce you to somebody. This is the Teeny Tiny Tattoo. Brand new. I got her this morning. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Project Semicolon, if you look closely, the little body of the butterfly is a semicolon. And then I've got the wings. The semicolon and project semicolon is a way to try and support and to kind of identify that you're not ready to give up. I came close to suicide more than once. A semicolon means that your story or your sentence isn't finished yet. It's a pause. But you're not done. I'm not done. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do the best I can to keep going. And this little butterfly 
is going to remind me every time I look in the mirror. Yeah, she looks kind of funny right now because I've still, since it's brand new this morning, I've still got the, um, the film dressing over it, so. Yes, it looks even funnier when I wrinkle up my forehead. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on my eyes. The only thing I've got on currently is some moisturizer that covers everything that is not under the medical film. If you're in the States, if you're in Oregon, if you are in Southeast Oregon, Beloved Tattoo is a wonderful, wonderful place to get ink work done. It's a one-woman shop. She's got a setup in an old historic building. And it's just, she's wonderful. She's got a great touch. She makes sure she you know what's going on. She doesn't lay hands or the needle machine on you until she lets you know it's coming. Wonderful. Beloved Tattoo. She's got a Facebook page. I, I. We're starting to talk about getting more ink done since I found myself a new artist. I couldn't find one in Florida that made me happy, at least not where I was, so. Anyway, AOA Studio. The White Concealer. My favorite white base. Don't mind the sniffling. I'm going to hopefully not cough, sneeze, or whatever. I will try to keep the sniffling to a dull roar. It's called allergies. I'm still trying to get acclimated to the allergens here. This is only our second summer, so. We got here just before summer started last year. So April, this past April has been a whole year we've been in this part of Oregon. And this is the farthest away from my home state I have ever lived. Born and raised in Virginia, born in Old Town Alexandria, right across the river from D.C., It was interesting times. I got some of my civil rights education right up close and personal. I was living across the river from DC during the civil rights marches and remember seeing <clears throat> literal smoke rising over the city when some of the marches became more dangerous 
it's like you know if people don't listen sometimes the frustration explodes it's the way it be alrighty let's see what I start off with here now the picture like I said we got some darks where you've got the tree line and then yeah I've got my monitor over here the monitor has got the picture the tree line has got the darks and then there's that hazy blue gray above it so I'm going to possibly be even mixing a few colors to get what I'm looking for we shall see I am digging around in everything I've got to see what I can come up with because it's, it's gorgeous this has got to be one of my favorite photos so far Now, these colors do not have quick and easy names here because they put them on the back side upside down. This is my BYS palette that's in the um, Smokies. And yeah, I used Galaxy and Graphite and kind of dipped back and forth with that just a little bit to get this gray that's got a little bit of flicker to it here and there because I'm pretty sure that if you get close enough in this picture you would probably see um, fireflies I'm only guessing but Excuse me. I will be right back. Anyway, whether or not you can see fireflies, there's not a lot of sparkle, but I wanted something that wasn't just completely dark, dense, because you've still got some light coming through the trees at a lower level where the the sun is setting behind the trees so you don't want something necessarily or at least I don't that's absolutely solid but I am going to take this all the way across moving in towards the corner and just I'm not adding any more product I'm not picking up any more pigment I'm just using what's on the brush so it's kind of naturally lightening as I get over here now part of the thing with these photo inspirations is you can only use the colors that are in the photo you don't get to go grab up something else just because you don't have to use every one of the colors in the photo 
but you can only use the colors that are in the photo. Which is why I'm not actually painting on any little fireflies. I'm just not worried that much about having a little sparkle in the gray. Now, this picture that Angie chose is another one, kind of like the very first one that we used doing one of these collaborations where a friend of her, another friend of hers took the picture and sent it to her. And I think it's the same artist, and I think it was Maz. I'll have to check with her to make sure. I want to give credit where it's due, because this is a gorgeous picture. Like I said, I don't know where the light is reflecting from, but oh, it's just, it's gorgeous. Now, I'm going to start working on that kind of blue-gray up in the sky. Now, Rimmel and I are not seeing eye-to-eye -eye on some stuff when it comes to some of their practices. But then again, Wet n' Wild and I are not seeing eye-to-eye -eye on some stuff. My problem is every time I think about, you know, cruelty-free stuff, there is no real proof that any of them are as cruelty-free as they say. And I own the stuff. I'm not throwing it out. It's perfectly good makeup. I'm going to use it till it's gone. The thing is, I probably will not repurchase quite a lot of this. Because I have issues with their uh, cruelty-free claims and some of their practices. I'll smear this around just a little bit since it's decided to transfer. Yes, indeed. Hooded eyes. Here we go again. Yes, I have hooded eyes. It means I'm going to get transfer from the lower lid to the upper lid. It's how it works. Deep set eyes have a similar problem. It's annoying, but there it is. You know, I'm not going to throw the stuff out because they've already got my money for this stuff. It's not going to hurt their feelings. However, not buying more from them, yeah, that may get a little more attention. Now, I'm picking up kind of a hazy purple. There are no names on this. This is the Magnifies Rainbow Edition. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of a shimmery gray that's in the same palette. Mix that up just a little bit. And start bringing that across. Up here.
purple, a little more purple so I get some more of the bluey tone in this section. And I'm going to pick up some of the blue that's right next to the, right between the purple and the gray. So I can make sure I've got that little bit of blue that's left in that hazy sky. And then kind of just shiver these together here. Now I'm trying something. Where, yeah, I'll probably, I'll be doing sort of a cut crease. I'm not, I'm not really good at cut creases. Partially because it's hard to do them when you've got hooded creepy eyes but doing you know layers extra layers of product on hooded creepy eyes I'm 60 I've earned them using extra product just kind of builds up and makes everything look cakey and that's not necessarily a really good look for anyone get that blue in there And yes, I've got this eye a little bit higher than this one. Happens pretty much every time as I first start putting stuff down. People are not symmetrical. We really are not. We just are not perfect. Everybody's got a funky place somewhere. My eyes are not symmetrical. They're not entirely even the same shapes. Close, but no cigar. Now, put those two away for a while and I'm going to start looking at the space I've got left right in through here and I am going to figure out how much of that I want to try to lighten back up with the concealer but I don't really want to pick up a whole lot more of just bright white I'm going to put the white concealer that I've got left on the brush and just kind of tone the other colors down just a little bit. Okay, I took that one back a little far. I can pull that back in. It 
See, now don't just ditch your brushes. Keep them handy in case you need to fiddle with something. Yeah, this brush is a little thick for trying to do this, but it's it's got perfectly good white concealer on it. <clears throat> Yes, I know. I said I didn't want to do this. Well, guess what? I doed it. Yeah, I don't, I don't worry so much about being precise with the cut crease thing. For one thing, my hands are too unsteady to worry about being, you know, drawing perfect graphic shapes on these eyes. Okay, now, see this? This pattern right through here is because I have creepy eyes. And it pushes. See? You can see where it's pushing the skin around. Which is making patterns in the eye shadow. Because as the skin gets all bunched up you're hitting the top of those wrinkles instead of getting down in. So you end up having to like gently pull a bit to flatten those wrinkles out so that you can get in to those spaces and make sure that you get if you don't already have wrinkles, do not pull on your eyes. Don't. Because the wrinkles will only get worse. Now, I've got a couple of different palettes that I'm going to try and work with for the neon colors in those bubbles. I've got this one, which is called Street Ink. Intense Matte Makeup Palette. Malibu Glitz. Okay? Not a big name. Malibu Glitz. Look at those colors. They're gorgeous. And Aftershock by Bad Habit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm still really annoyed that Shop Hush went under and Bad Habit mostly disappeared with them. Lastly is TZ Cosmetics spelled with an X at the end with these that I picked up. I was thinking I was going to use these for Mardi Gras. They're sheer toppers. But they are gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now, I am going to try, diligently try, with little flat brushes. 
and a little spritz here and there if I need it to get some of these colors that are in this picture onto my eyes in these the space where I've put the white. Now see I've got that cotton pick and transfer thing going on again. So yeah, some of the neon is going to have to be playing over top of the gray. We will see how well it works. Let's see. I've got that magenta to work with. And I've got in the street ink a color called Rose. This one right down here. I'm hoping it's going to be intense enough. We will find out. If it's not, there is a pink in the aftershock that I am likely to also go after. Now, the street ink is again all mattes. But I may mess with them just a little bit and try using the setting spray trick on them to get them to stick better. Okay, this is now with the Aftershock palette. It's a color called Tingle. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so I'm going to take a little bit of that rose and a little bit of the tingle because you want to keep, even if the, you're covering up a color, you want to keep the same tones so that you don't look completely different. Now I'm going to put this in a slightly different spot. I am not going to try and match side to side. Why should I match? I'm going to put a little of this down under the lower lashes while I've got it on my brush. Now the lower lashes may come out looking a little closer to matched we'll see at least for the order of where they went down oh I hope I really do hope I can get that teal green using drop drop is another one from aftershock and this one is a glitter so, yeah, there will be some spritzing going on. If I don't dry that feral, Angie will thump me. Dry your feral. If you're feral... is dropping water into your palette you are going to find that you have hard pan that you cannot get rid of that will wreck your palette it's not worth it take the extra second dry the ferrule the other problem is, if you're not careful, you could have that fluid 
and if you're using a setting spray product there's going to be alcohol and that kind of stuff in some of it and you could be doing things that loosen up the bristles in your brush if you let that fluid run down into the base and you don't want to wreck your brushes. Okay, this is definitely going to be a festival look. This is going to be lots and lots of bright. Yes, I've got my little color switch down here, my little homemade color switch, a little tin from Dollar Tree, and a Dollar Tree ponytail donut. Works just fine. Alrighty, let's try pulling some of that yellow in. Now, the yellow in the aftershock is a matte. The yellow in my street ink is a matte. However, I have that very, very bright yellow in the TZ Cosmetics that I can put on top. That's the Aftershock palette. This is BPM. Now, there's no color names on this palette. It just the way it is. There, that brightens that up just a tad. Now, I don't have a bright orange. at least not the shade of orange that I'm seeing in the picture in either of the other palettes. I've got kind of a salmon orange in the Aftershock and the Street Ink, it, there's no real, they've got kind of a muddy brown orange so, I'm going to take some of the Sensation, which is the Aftershock Salmon, and then I'm going to use the TZ orange topper
I really love my Aftershock palette. Lots and lots of intense color. Now, like I said, this is not <clears throat> going to match side to side. It just isn't. I'm generally putting some of the colors in opposites or wherevers and I'm putting like the salmon orange I'm going to run through the center on both eyes just because I'm feeling it And then, I'm going to get that intense orange in the TZ, which is a shower. Hit it with the spray. And then just lay that shimmer right over the top across like this no I have no idea what I'm doing I figured this picture was so much fun it would just be really kind of fun to grab out the colors and see where they end up. I am definitely thinking festival. This is not going to be a quiet look by any stretch. Let's see, what haven't I used? Let me get some more of the green. I'm going to use the green from here from the TZ and I'm gonna go under the eyelashes again. Almost all the way across, but not quite. the green on the brush I think I'm gonna pack that in in to a couple of spots on the upper lids just for the heck of it
Now, I looks like this are one of the reasons some of the people you watch on a YouTube channel have a bazillion brushes. It keeps you from contaminating your colors and muddying up your colors by mixing them. Let's see. I'm going to get some more of that magenta in here. I think. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to put some more magenta on this one. I'm going to just use the tingle this time. Now, see, some of the colors do some pretty long arcs. Some of the colors are doing little short art pieces. I'm going to put a little more of the green in, I think. I don't know. I may have to stop now. We'll see. bit of the dark matte green and then pick up that shimmer topper just to give it a little variance because some of the colors do have just a little shift to them. I don't want to get too <laughs> crazy. I know, a little late. When it comes to how many colors I want to try to force in. Only because if I try to put every last flippin' possible shade that I can see in this photograph on my eyes, which are not very large. Yeah, I don't have those big doe eyes that's got those huge, you know, fields of lid. This is some of the purple. from the TZ on the toppers. Put the 
that violet purple into that inner corner just a bit more. Just to kind of give the other colors kind of a landing zone in the corner. Okay, this is, yes, very intense, kind of weird, definitely editorial. You could even say avant-garde if you want. But I think I'm done slapping color on my eyes. And I'm going to run off of here and do a little finish up and spray everything down and see how we look on the other side with any luck I won't look any crazier than necessary see you in just a minute alrighty I'm back All I did was powder my face, throw a little blush, bronzer, and highlight at it. And I used the Sephora um, lip gloss in Fuchsia Mermaid that was a gift. And Revolution Star Skin Kiss called Star Kiss, which is a blue for the highlight, which was a gift. I like it when I get stuff that I can mess with. Now, this, when I say it's a gift, that means gift from friends. Now, I don't know if it translates well at this point, but yes, there is a bit of pink in the hair. Just because. I did it a couple of days ago, so little blush, little bronzer, little highlight, little purple eyeliner. It's really hard to see. Waterline has got pink pencil in it. The eyeliner is your basic felt tip. Anybody ready to go to the concert? Now when you get finished here, you need to immediately go over to Angie and watch hers. If you did it the other way around, because you know Angie, hi, welcome, hang out, go ahead, it's fun. Angie has put a lot of work in maintaining this series. And I've got to tell you, it's one of the most fun series I have ever seen. It's wonderful. It's great. She finds the pictures or lets her collaborator pick the pictures. But she keeps this series going because it's fun. It's definitely a challenge each time. There is nothing the same. We have no idea what the other person is going to do with the same photograph. Some of them come out similar. Some of them are completely different. And sometimes, depending on your equipment, you may see a different color <laughs> that the other person doesn't. As long as the color is there. You can use it. I had fun doing this. I hope you had fun watching it. Try and stay out of trouble. Remember, I don't have bail money.
be good. Mm-hmm.